percent, you will level off, stay for a while, and then at a certain time you will what? You'll descend. So David is anticipating the gun of life to break forth like a little child. He's praying. Oh Lord, I can't wait for the dawning of the morning. Let's see what's worth. Verse 40, 140 it's here. My eyes anticipate the night watch. Amen. And I awake before the cry of the watchman. Amen. That I may meditate on your word. David said, I don't need the watchman to wake me up. He said, I don't need the alarm clock. Amen. To wake me up. I anticipate the time and before. Amen. The watchman can come to get me. I'm up. I am up meditating on the word. I need to get those thoughts for today. Because today is a new day. I'll meet new people and new things. A new situation. An intricate situation. A diverse situation. So the thoughts and the plans that you worked yesterday will not work what? Today. The anointing I have yesterday will not work what? Today. You see, this is where many times the church is trapped. You have some thoughts and plans and you are very effective yesterday. And you thinking you can live on yesterday manner into today. But the manner from yesterday, as we know, it goes bad. Maggots can get at it. And that manner will not be able to use today with the new people and the new thing and the intricacy and the diversity that will come your way. So you need to get up in time to catch the word of the Lord to be ready for today. And you need to be like, like David, like a child, praying, Lord, I need new word. I think Kirk Frampton have a song. I'm going to need to pray to make it today. David is praying before the watchman get up just in order to make it today. Mm. Some of us the church, we are lazy. We don't understand. And why are you lazy? You don't realize you're in a race. You don't realize you gotta pick up a certain speed, get it. and listen, remember, when you are trying to establish something, it takes what? Time. We are adjusting to this COVID time. We're not even to run church how we used to run church. But it took us some time to get all the elements and thing in place to get the new establishment, even established and directing it. It just doesn't happen overnight. If you're going to live your life, you're going to need the Lord to give you thoughts and plan to get it established and then directing, meaning get it to compound. There may be must start things, but it can never get it, keep it going. Because after establishment, come directing, controlling. After you get the car moving, you got to keep the car going. Do you understand this process? You don't want your momentum to fight against you. It must be directed or controlled or managed. Amen? So David said, Amen? Like a little child, I awake. He said, I don't need the watchman to wake me up. I am getting up before the watch. And why am I getting up? I need to get some new thoughts, some new words for today. Amen? I find my, you know, our, 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 this is any Christian that's practicing the spirit. I'm not, by the way, let me just simplify it. Practicing your spirit is nothing more than exercising it. You let the spirit do the things the spirit's supposed to do. Just like moving your hand. And what you'll find the spirit do, he is excellent at anticipating today. So he always look to the Lord to get what's necessary today to be ready for what? Today. It is the soul that assumes what he used yesterday will be good enough for what? Today. He assumes every day is what? The same. He would like that to happen because he likes so-called control. But he's not a controller of the rams or even himself or the moments or the day. So you need to get fresh anointed. So David said, I get up and I stop praying. And I get up before the watchman. Amen. That I may meditate. Remember, meditate meaning I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to examine to see what I need for today. And the thoughts that have been given to me, the manner, how it should fit. I've given a set of puzzles today. I need to call, meditate, examine them a bit. Reflect on them to see how they should fit today. Because how, how I put it together yesterday, how I dealt with Pastor Chow is not necessarily how I dealt with the First Lady. And how I deal with the First Lady is not how I'm going to deal with our children. Or, amen? And our sisters and our mom and our brother. I need different things. 
I find the Spirit makes me pray things that I, I feel quite confident because I dealt with it for a long time. Yet I find the Spirit makes me pray to God, Lord, grant me grace to deal with this, but I've been dealing with this for 10 years. And what the Spirit knows today is what? A different day at a different time, these interfaces in their what? Interfacing, I mean, are taking place. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say God is awesome? God, God is awesome. awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perfect thoughts, perfect plan. To the virtual church, where wherever you are, you might be in your house. Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your, ch your children, amen? We're going to have to pray to make it today. <laughs> and you're going to need to anticipate you're gonna, that you need new thoughts and plans to deal with each day. You cannot run, amen, on, on what the bishop teach you two weeks ago and expect it will be good enough for today. Because that's not how the bishop works. The bishop every day looks for new manner to deal with a sophisticated or, or intricate day. You, you see, because we can't control all the faculty of the moment, I think they're very intricate and sophisticated. So I need new thoughts, new ways to deal with them. Amen? They're so dynamic. Verse 149 said, Hear my voice according, amen, according to your steadfast love. David God, I know you love me, so I want you to hear me crying early in the morning. For the new thoughts and plans according to your love. He's pushing back God's nature on God's nature. He said, God, I want you to hear your child, your creation, crying out to you that you need thoughts and plans according to peace and according to prosperity, according to your nature, God. Oh, that boy is brilliant, I'm telling you. Perfect. David don't pray according to himself. Perfect. He goes, I know God is loving. I know God loves me. I know what I need. I need thoughts and plans because he has thoughts and plans for my success and peace. Amen? And His glory. So I want Him to respond to me, not according to me, not according to the cleanliness of my hand. You see, some of us, maybe, maybe, I never have the confidence that I've been a man of God for a long time, but I still can't pray this prayer. David, I have a prayer I can't, I can't pray. Hmm. David, I have a prayer I cannot pray. I pray through Jesus Christ. David said, God rewards me according to the cleanliness of my hands. That man got a lot of confidence. <laughs> he had a lot of confidence. I can't pray that prayer. And I've been a man of God. I go, Father, bless me, amen, according to your grace. <laughs> Reward me according to your grace. Because you have to be quite clean. In a sense, I go through Jesus. Amen. But David had such confidence, you know, he walked some time. He goes, the Lord, in Psalms 22, David goes, the Lord rewards me according to the cleanliness of my hands. Amen. I have a lot of respect for that man. A lot. So David, 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 you said, amen. I'm praying like he prayed according to God's nature, but God give us grace. I personally pray according to the grace. Amen? According to the cleanliness of Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have that. So it's the same idea here. Amen. But if you don't think you need God's love, can you know you're moving all right? You could pray like David Sam's credit too. Amen? Then in verse 4, 149, he said, Hear my voice according to your steadfast love, O Lord. Then he went on to say, Now this is the, prepare, the preparation, the acceleration. Quicken and give me life according to your righteous decree. He said, Now quicken me. Now format me. Get me in the position that I'll maximize the day, the moment, the situation, the circumstance, and all conditions. First he called upon God's love, then he called upon what he need today. I need a reformative, an effective one, the latest model of equipment, of efficiency to move through the day. You see the quick in it, get me ready according to the time, the season, the moment. Because a lot of time you may come to the race, but the race is running, you said both at 9.6 something second, and you are running at 10, so you need a quicken. You need a, a jump start. You need to get into the moment, the time, the race at hand. The latest update. You need the latest. I, I love this piece of work of David. You got you to you gotta get up early, I'm ready for your word. Then he pushes back on God, Father, please answer me according to your nature. Then he goes, now quicken me. 
according to the, you know, the moments that are coming. You know what I'm going to face. I'm going to need to outrun a horse like Elisha. So I'm going to need to be quick and reset. Mm. You see when you're like me and you squander the first part of your life doing nonsense. I can't run the race effectively from getting 20 years behind. Because 20 years ahead, the horses I've been running with is gone. The only way I can compete now on the same ground, even if the Lord established my steps and directed, I need a what? A quickening. Mm -hmm. Because the race that was set for me is the race that is what? Set for me. I'm the one to fall back. So now I have to ask the Lord, Father, according to your love, hear my voice and quicken me to maximize the rest of my life. Quicken me to be the man of God I'm supposed to be. Quicken me to be the husband I'm hard to be. I should have learned to be a husband since I'm maybe in my teen and early 20s, but I'm still trying to get good at it. I should have been a better man of God, a better brother, a better sister. I should have learned to believe better, think better, speak better, live more peaceful, more successful. Well, Lord, as you can see, I've been stumbling around, wrong establishing or not establishing. So now I need you to what? Quicken me. According to your love. In essence, I'll say it different. I'm saying, God, quicken me according to your investment in me. You invest in me to have glory out of me. Quicken me according to your glory. I understand what I'm saying. Not according to my limitation, Psalms 119, verse 96. That those, can, can you see if I try to quantify it? Typically, it's way too limited. I'm not the architect of myself or the realms of the race. I need God to quicken me according to what? His love, His glory, His standard. What is necessary according to His will. But I, I, I need to tell you the truth about something. Sometimes you pray this prayer, and when the quickening happens, you go, Whoa, I'm moving way too fast. Things are changing like there's no tomorrow. Mm. I didn't expect this much. So when you call for the quickening, you must prepare for radical change. God is a radical entity. Radical. When you read the Bible, one of the things you're going to learn about God, He is super radical. <laughs> Woo! You take you know, a couple of fish and some bread and go, feed thousands, He is radical. Amen? He'll make sea and bank stock. He's radical. So when you call on the quickening, expect radical change. Unless you're moving already according to the will. Then that's just the way you are. Or that's the way he has you. Sometimes I've seen people pray this prayer, then they go, Bishop, my whole life has changed. It's what happened. It's what happens. So many pray, I modify prayer. Lord, quicken me according to my estimation. Meaning, tone it down to where I can manage it. Mm. Well, you'll be quicken, but you won't catch up the race, the, the, 20, the 20 years that gone ahead of you. Jesus was established for 30 years. And then he did his work for what? 36 months. He did his whole ministry. This is why he said, you will do greater things than me. You will be established longer and directed longer. You should produce what? A whole lot more. He said, if you don't, each one of you have to appear before me to give an account. What have you been doing with that much time? You have entered so many races, and you don't even have a medal. You don't place. What are you doing? Clearly, you're not using the thoughts and plans. Hallelujah. Say, quicken me and give me life. According to your righteous decree, verse 150, the last one. Look at the attitude. I love this attitude between this piece of Psalms. They draw near, amen, who follow after wrong what? Thinking and persecute me with wickedness. They are far from your law. Just because like you can have right thinking, amen, you can have wrong thinking. Now we had read earlier, but amen, David, David said, deliver me from oppression. There are many who follow the wrong thoughts and the wrong plan, and they'll try to draw near to you. I, I, was, I was born in Guyana, and we were saying in the West Indies, it's in North America too. Misery like what? Company, I'll say different. People that think wrong and believe wrong and think wrong, love 
to form cliques and groups that what? Support the inadequateness that they can't get established into peace and into success. And then they make excuse like life is just miserable and, and, and life is consist of all unhappiness and pain and sorrow, you know, and, and life is just hell here. You just have to try to get through the hell. No, you're in the hell because you can't get the appropriate establishing that leads into peace and into prosperity. David said they try to draw, amen, they draw near who follow, they're following it, because that's called there's the way of righteousness, there's the way of what? Wrong. Amen? He said, they draw near who follow after wrong thinking. What gets us in this lack of peace or lack of prosperity, you have a thinking that does not support or move according to the constitution of success. Never forget this. Okay? We like to make excuses to lie and justify our poor thinking. Success is predictable. It's a specific way of thinking and believing and being. And so is what? Failure. It's not accident. You take on a certain, you might in your ignorance take on a certain thoughts or plans, but it will lead them to failure. Or even you might in your ignorance take on a specific kind of thoughts and plans, and it will lead to success. Nevertheless, it's predictable according to the thoughts and the what? Plans. There's laws. They're laws. David said they are far from your law. He you said your laws, amen, is love and peace and success and peace. Amen. He said follow these and you will be affected. Sin is to keep you away from God's laws, make you stop anticipating and you do not comprehend or live for the importance of those words. You see, why would you want to live a life that does not lead to success and peace? Why are we that miserable? God didn't make it. You're made in His image. You're His imago Dei. You are made for success and peace. In fact, you are so made, He charged you. You see, you will have dominion. You will dominate. In the air, in the water, on the ground. He said, I'll give you dominion. And I will hold you accountable according to the dominion. Tell somebody you're made for success. We are made for success. And made to be in peace. And made to be in peace. While we succeed. While we succeed. Not a crazy world you're living in. Stressed like there's no tomorrow. Meaning, it, please be very clear. We have a lot of success in the world. But we don't have a lot of what? Peace. Meaning they are succeeding without any what? Peace. So it's only part of the success. You're supposed to have success and what? Peace. It's when the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, it's joy, you're enjoying the peace. And it's being in the spirit all the time, never separated from God. Anytime you're separated from God, you're out of the kingdom. Amen? Anytime you're not enjoying the process, you're somehow being separated. They build on each other. He said, first there's righteousness, which makes peace just, amen? The, the Bible said, righteousness that gives in, in, in the book of um, Hebrew, it, it gives a peaceable fruit. The effects of righteousness is what? Peace. And you'll find you're enjoying that process. You enjoy, there are many people that don't enjoy being with themselves. They don't enjoy being with God. You, you know, you put up with people, they're miserable all the time. Any place, anything, nobody wants to be at them. And what's the lack? There's a lack of peace. They don't have peace in themselves, peace in their belief, their thoughts, their words, and how could they have it in the interplay? You find people that walk in the way of righteousness and not the manifestation, the fruits of peace. Oh, people love to be with them. How oh, they love to be around them. They don't want to leave. And what's happening, this person is walking in righteousness and bearing the peace, the fruits of righteousness, which is what? The Bible says, a peaceable fruit, a peaceable manifestation, a peaceable showing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this is what David after. He said, oh, I, I, like, I anticipate the morning. I know I'm supposed to pray. It's like the rooster. The rooster's supposed to crow in the morning. They would say, but like a child, I'm praying. I know I have to wait till the morning. But Father, I have cried out like a child. I know the morning will come soon. Can I have your word that I need to make it today? Can I have some righteousness that will give me fruits of what? Peace. Mm. In Jesus' name, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The attitude must be appropriate. 
You must be had, have an attitude fully committed to having what is necessary for peace and for success. And believe me, don't let nobody feel. Notice what David said, according to your love. Did nobody want you to have thoughts, amen, of peace amen, and success more than what? The one who created you. David said, according to your nature. According to your love, Lord. Amen. Quicken me. I am thanking God that he has quickened the church. And for the unchurched, those that have fallen behind and not walking in the established desire of God, thoughts and plans for peace and success. I am praying the Lord will quicken you. I'm praying you're going to make up the time that is lost. And you're going to run an effective race. This is for the unchurched. And for the church, may you continue to move according to the will of God and the time of God in the quickening and in all that you need according to his thoughts and prayers that you will be effective in all you'll be and do. Glorify him. The Bible teaches in Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus came to bring many sons into what? Glory. He came to make you productive. Tell somebody Jesus came to make me productive. Jesus came, came to, to make, make us productive. productive. While I'm at peace. While, While I'm at peace. peace. He said, I give you peace, but not like the world. He said, the world gives success, but there's no peace. We see people are succeeding all the time and still killing themselves. Still are alcoholic, drug addict, etc. But they have all the wealth. Because success has two parts. One part is productivity. But the prerequisite of productivity is what? Peace. Peace. Some are working to no end. Because they're never at peace. No matter how much success, they're never enjoying it. Because they're always what? Restless. No matter how many jobs they have, they're always on the run. How many women they have? They're restless souls. They're forever creating some form of hell for them or somebody else. And what's missing is the thoughts and plan conducive. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 1, 2, 3. Amen. God said, those who have their thoughts, who are anticipating, amen, who have all the, inqu the inquiring and all the thoughts on me, the inclination on me, they will have a steadfast peace, continuous peace. He said they will have continuous peace. They're like David. They, they, they're just waiting to get into God. Amen. God thoughts. You know, I want to share something with you. I, I, I receive a, I have many Bibles, it's true. <laughs> uh, but I receive, I, I receive a new Bible recently. It's not new, but I mean, I, I knew it to come into my life. It's a Bible, Mama Hole, is it? I think it's from 1927. Um, yeah, or earlier. It, 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 it's it's um, one of the earlier editions. My point is, I can't wait to get into it. I am so excited. <laughs> You know, uh, you know um, one of the things I'm excited, Pastor, I was thinking maybe we, you'll have to read some of this. Too. The Bible used to have more books than six to six. They took out a few books. This one have all the books. Um, it's a prophet I didn't even hear about. But I'm excited. I'm like a little child. I can't wait. I think about it. I meditate. I'm like, what do you want? You gotta give me a chance to get into it. I don't want nobody to disturb me when I'm focusing on it. You gotta be like that. You gotta anticipate the moment you are God's words. The moment. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's move push forward a little bit. I wanna end, I wanted to end at 130. What a great attitude to communion. Eh? Oh, just fantastic. He's that he's a true sprinter like. He's anticipating the gun. He, you know, he gets, he's in the blocks before they tell him, get in the blocks, you know. Versus most people, they love their bed. <laughs> they don't want to get up in the They wait for the watchman to wake them. Too late. Too late. You got to love the morning in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's, we're close. Maybe I can finish this thing. I think I will finish it. I have one, I did one, two. I have four more scripture, but two is a reminder. Uh, let's go to stay, stay, stay in Psalms 199 and let's look at six, uh, verse 66 to 68. Same chapter. 
68. Sixty six to sixty eight. Where am I? Man. Yeah. And then let me see if I can show you two reminder. And maybe I'll end this message this week. Yeah. If I find it for long, and I'll, I'll end it. Hallelujah. We must ask God, Amen, who desire and wants to give us the thoughts and the plans we need for our peace and success to teach us, Amen, how to desire it and how to live and walk in it. Psalms 119, verse 66 to 68. Shall we move? David talking to the Lord. Now look, look at his prayer to the Lord. Teach me good judgment, wise and right discernment. Dear Lord, I, I need you to teach me how to judge things properly. Because I look at good and I call it what? Evil. And I look at evil. The Bible teaches in Isaiah chapter 5, the Bible said, they're calling good evil and evil what? Good. He said people and things with bad heart and bad plans have nothing to do with peace and success. I go, man, this person is great. And people that are fully committed to you, I look at them and I go, I don't know, you're not dynamic enough. I look at situations that I should be established, get established and working in, and I go, oh, this is boring. I don't want to do that. I want to get up to her. So David realized, remember again, Psalms 119, verse 96. This is a man that knows himself. He got, there's a limitation on me, and I need to get his limitation fixed. So to do it, I need, I need to ask the Lord to do some things. So verse 6 and 6, he got, teach me good judgment, wise and right discernment. Amen? And knowledge. For I have believed, trust, rely on, amen, and claim to your commandment. He said, I'm depending on you how to deal with people, things, situation, and you, Lord. So you're going to need to give me the discernment to do this well. Amen? Verse 6 to 7 said, Before I was afflicted, before I started making all the mistakes and experiencing the fruits that are not peaceable, I went astray. But now your words, amen, but now your words do I keep, hearing, receive, loving, loving and obey. He said, before I get the effect of my own thinking and my own believing and, amen, I'm interacting and I got the fruits, the impact of it. I didn't love your words. But after I feel the sting of the beat, I am adhering to your words. I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm loving it and receiving it and obeying it. Yeah, wrong software. Has sin that. He said, and I feel, you see, many of us, we don't have a love for God's word. We don't like hearing it. When you hear God's word, you're like, ah, oh, the same old thing again. Mm. Line upon line. Amen. Yes, you got just the rules and this and that. But it's how you get to peace and success. You're going to need to get this and get it consistently. You have to develop, as the psalmist shows us, amen, a love for it, love to hear it, love to receive it, and always want to what? Obey it. If you don't love receiving it, you're not going to want to hear it. Some of us, we're not, we're not excited about going to church. You're never excited about reading your Bible. You're never excited about prayer or communion. But let it has to do with anything that will be, amen, fruits of lack of peace and success, something of the world and destruction. You're all over it. Like a moth to a flame. You seem totally drawn to ways of destruction. Destructive thoughts. How many of us know people that are so susceptible? You go, how do you get in these situations? You know, as a bishop, as a man of God, I deal with a lot of people. A lot of people call me for different things. There's some people, if I get the phone ring, I know where they with this path's gone. Can you call me all the time? They don't seem to have a knack to move, a, you know, according to God. Oh, bishop, I just called to say, I've been meditating on God's words and receiving his thoughts and plans and my life is at peace and I'm enjoying the success. No! No! You know that I can just once give the highest praise and say, God, hallelujah! See, but here, here's the pattern. Wrong software, affliction, call Sifu. <laughs> no, 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 no. In fact, they, they're so good at it, they'll start, they preface the conversation. I know I won't call, call you when it's bad. Why do you think you have to call me when it's bad? Because you will not depart from the poor software. Though you have been afflicted again, you will not learn to love, receive, hear, and obey. No. No, no. Though I've told you the same, the same thing, the same conversation we had. The reason you are getting no peace and no success, whether it's in your marriage, in your finance, in your resource, in your relationship, is because you're following a program that does not consist. It's not a part of it. The way to get it is this. But then I have to love it and hear it and obey it. Yes. That's how I do it. 
There's no magic. Christianity is not magical. It's learning to love God. Always ready to receive Him and His instruction. Loving to hear it and willing to what? Obey it. It's not complicated. I know some of us forgive us that try to make it um, theatrical or um, mystical. There's nothing mystical. It is a creator that gives instruction how the creation should live. You either learn to receive it, hear it, receive it, love it, and obey it, or you don't. Those that do, he calls them obedient. Those that don't, he calls them what? Rebellion. Or rebellious. So David said, and for many of us, including me, what makes us change? I was not hearing to God's word, do I grow up with it? But when I feel the afflictions of my own ways, then I go, Lord, there has to be a better way than you think. I'm glad you have come to this conclusion. Now will you let me give you the thoughts and plans that deals with peace, consist of peace and prosperity. In Jesus' name. You know, I got a joke to give you. Even during the pandemic, the Lord says, son, you'll increase. When I was a younger Christian, and I started to use God's thoughts and plans, I go, man, I'm just blessed and lucky. Even you are blessed, man, I'm lucky. It's very simple. If you use my thoughts and plans, this is what will happen. That's nothing to do with luck. Nothing. <laughs> luck will be you're using the wrong and you're getting what? The good. It's righteousness. You get just righteousness. You use my thoughts and plan, you'll have plenty of peace. And plenty of prosperity. You don't. You can even belong to me. You don't have to worry what will happen. You see, when the righteous get their hands in wrongful thinking, as David said, they draw closer, then they'll what? They'll get the, the rod of, amen, of the wicked. Verse 68 said, You are good and kind, amen, and do good. Teach me your stature. God is good and kind. And he so want to teach you how to live in his goodness. So they would say, Lord, you're good and you're kind. And now that I've been afflicted and I'm leaning to you to hear and to listen and obey, teach it to me. And if you're smart, you pray. Like your bishop pray. Lord, teach me. Because I've seen God teach this to many people. Including me at one point. Solomon. But you need to, him to teach it to you. And then, Lord, help me to obey it. Don't trust yourself just because you get the information, you'll do it. Ask him to help you to obey it. To obey it. In Jesus' name. Amen? I want to show you something quickly and then let's wrap this process up. Go to um, 1 Kings. David is about to die and he's about to give Solomon some instruction. Solomon has become king. David has made Solomon king over his other sons. Especially the one who was masquerading to be king. David had a son. One of David's sons before David even died, and he, without even asking his father, he got some chariots and had people running behind him and declaring himself as king. <laughs> <laughs> And gather all the people to celebrate his success. But his father did not tell him he succeeded. He didn't ask this. <laughs>